Moments of Inspiration, a community outreach program of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. It is our prayer that this morning's devotion will inspire you to begin your day with God. Good morning. Friends, I greet you in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Welcome to this, the fifth edition of Moments of Inspiration. I am Reverend Brenda Bullock, Minister of the Barakwa Pastoral Region. The Barakwa Pastoral Region comprises Botnaf, Lengua, Barakwa Union, Clark Rochard, and the Rochard Douglas Presbyterian Church. Stay with me for the next 30 minutes as I lead you in a time of praise, prayer, and the Word of God. I invite you to meditate with me on the theme of love and joy. I now invite you to bow your heads with me in prayer. Eternal God, you gave to us rest during the night and have awakened us to welcome a new day. The dawn of a new day gives us the opportunity to discover your grace and mercy, to walk and to explore, to see with new eyes wonderful opportunities afforded to us, to experience new and unique ways that we children of God can be led to our Father. Bless us today that as we give of our time and talent, you would be pleased with all that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today we are blessed to have with us again Miss Melanie Babulal, a recent winner of the music festival. She is a student of the Naprima Girls High School and is quite involved in the many activities of her school. Melanie is a young leader within our youth ministry and she does not fail to use her talents with singing to bring glory to God. She leads us now in a song of praise. He knows my name.
sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call and hears me when I call Thank you Melanie for that beautiful rendition. We listen to the word of the Lord as it comes to us from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 8. If I speak in the languages of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, as we begin this morning's devotion, as we think about our theme, love and joy, we reflect on what St. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. St. Paul writing to a church that was dynamic, a church that was involved in every aspect of Christ's life and ministry. He wrote a few words that has remained with us allowing us to understand a little bit about what love is. St. Paul in 1 Corinthians, the entire 13th chapter, speaks to us about love, what it is and what it is not. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. We use the word love so often in all that we do that somehow it has lost its significance. We speak about love, but we have forgotten that not only words, but actions speak louder. We love, but how do we treat the ones that we love? It's unfortunate that as this new year began, and we're almost in the month of June, the half of the 2016, we look around and we see those whom we love, parents, children, teachers, kind neighbors, friends, pillars of the community have abused the trust, the love that we have placed in them. Too many children have been abused by people who claim to love them. The defenseless whom our God has told us to protect and take care of have been facing the brunt of abuse in every way possible. There's also been an increase in the rise of abuse within households, marriages. We are told when we get married to love and to cherish. And so many make these affirmations of love, but yet their actions is not that of what love is. St. Paul tells us, to love. We may do so many things, but if there is no love, it is all for nothing. Today, my dear sisters and brothers, how do we see love? Is it just a verb? Something we read about? Something we acknowledge? Or is it something that we live? Jesus loves us. And how do we view Christ's love for us. He came, he suffered, he died, and rose again. His love was a love in action. 
a love to turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, help the one who needed help. His love brought redemption, forgiveness, acceptance. His love made a difference. But we do not only claim to love, there must be joy. And joy is different from happiness. Happiness is temporary. It comes with simply a new hairstyle. It comes with a pair of new shoes, the opportunity to go on a trip, and then the reality returns and happiness disappears to quickly emerge again when something new strikes our fancy. But joy, joy is different. Joy comes not with temporary things. Joy comes in and through the relationship we have with our God. Joy is a relationship we have with our God and it is expressed through and in our relationships one with the other. As Christians, as individuals, we are called to do the same thing every day. We get up, go to work, go to school, live our lives, and we're invited to come and to worship on the Lord's Day for special services. It's the ordinary things that everyone will do every day. But yet, there are those whom we admire, those whom we lift, those who we admire because in the ordinary things, there is a radiance in what they do. And we have to ask, how do they do this? In the routine of everyday living, how do they find joy? Where do they find joy? I simply think they find joy because they love what they do. If you cannot, if you do not, and if you will not love what is assigned to you, spiritually, emotionally, and otherwise, you will not pay attention. Your hands will go to the plow and you will simply walk away after a little while. The ministry of Jesus was a very short one, but he impacted on the lives of his disciples and those who followed him for a long time. There was much that brought pain. His disciples were scattered until the day of Pentecost when they came together. And there was a vibrancy. There was something about that moment that energized them. They always knew that they were loved. They knew that Christ loved them. He provided for them. But now there was this joy. They saw not the trials, not the tribulations, not the difficulties, not the uncertainties, but rather they saw the difference, the tangible difference that this love for God made in the lives of those who heard, probably for the first time, the love that Yahweh had for his people in the sending of his only son to make a difference. Today we listen to the words of St. Paul, reminding us again, faith, hope, and love remains, but the greatest of these is love. I encourage all of us, my dear sisters and brothers, to pay attention. Love is not temporary. Love is not light. Love makes the difference. And when we do what is required of us with purpose, it makes the difference. The Presbyterian Church has served our community for almost 150 years. Yes, we have not been perfect, but the joy in which our young people find in serving, in which our congregations have been a light that have reached out to bring some measure of hope hope when all seem hopeless, when the church has been the beacon of light when darkness is consuming, when there has been nowhere else for people to turn to, they have turned to the church. 
Today, I encourage all of us, not just to love the church, but to love the people in our lives, our mothers, our fathers, our siblings, to love the people who make a difference, our teachers, colleagues. Let us find joy, and let us show this joy in the way we treat those around us. My friends, love is not temporary. Love is eternal. God's love will always be there for us. May that love dwell within us. May that love motivate us. May Christ inspire us that wherever his spirit leads us, the joy that we find, that joy will encourage us to encourage others that the word of the Lord will find a room, a home, a place in our hearts that makes the difference. May God continue to shower his blessings upon us and may all that we do show God's love in our relationships, one with the other. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my delight to invite now Ms. Sanya Bihari, a student minister of our church, to inspire us with the song, Lord of Lords. Beholding your beauty is all that I long for. To worship you, Jesus, is my sole desire. For this very heart you have shaped for your pleasure, purpose to lift your name high. Here in surrender, in pure adoration, I enter your courts with an offering of praise. I am your servant, come to bring you glory, as is fit for the work of your hands. Now unto the Lamb who sits on the throne, be glory and honor and praise. All of creation resounds with a song. Worship and praise Him, the Lord of Lords. Spirit now living and dwelling within me, keep my eyes fixed ever on Jesus' face. Let not the things of this world ever sway me. I'll run till I finish the race. Now unto the Lamb who sits on the throne, be glory and honor and praise. All of eternity echoes the song. Worship and praise Him, the Lord of Lords. Holy Lord, You are holy. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Glory and honor and praise. 
praise Call all the sinners to join in the song Worship and praise Him, the Lord of Lords The Lord of Lords The Lord of Lords The Lord of Lords Thank you, Sanya, for that wonderful reminder that only unto God belongs all glory, honor, and praise. Friends, we live in a world that needs our prayer, and so I invite you to join with me as we lift our nation and world to God. Let us pray. Into your hands we place ourselves. Into your care we give ourselves, O Lord, our God, our Creator, and our Provider. This morning, gracious and ever-loving Father, we say a special prayer for all those who are weeping because of the loss of loved ones, the loss of security of employment, the presence of illness. May we all turn to you, O Lord, for you will be there for us, for you are our rock and our anchor, so we will not be tossed to and fro. Lord, we lift our nation's children, children who are abused, they are taken for granted, and they are neglected, made through our Sunday schools, youth groups, Presbyterian schools, be the safe haven for the innocent, that in some way their childhood, childlike presence would be maintained. Eternal God, we live in a world of plenty, but nations are closing their borders. There are millions of people who are looking for home, refugees who are fleeing, fighting. We're not only communities, but nations are being destroyed. We pray, O oh Lord, that the Western world will open their borders, that people will be made welcome, there'll be a safe haven. Lord, we pray for those who have the authority and the power, both near and far, not to see just need, but to be the means whereby these needs can be met, so that those who are hungry would be fed, those who are ill can meet the great physician, those who are in want, all that they desire is a place to call home, that they can feel safe. Lord, we pray today for women. Even today, they are, they are denied their rights. And unfortunately, O oh Lord, where so many have lost their homes and their husbands and their sons, as they seek a better life, so many are abused and are raped. May you protect the defenseless. Gracious and ever-loving Father, hear our prayer, for it is offered in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, our church offers many activities geared to women, men, youth, children and family at which you can develop a relationship with God. Ms. Sanya Bihari will give you more information on what you can be a part of. Over to you, Sanya. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. As Presbyterians, we follow the Reformed tradition and we ensure that all things are done in decency and with order. To do so, we offer training to our people. Have you ever wondered about worship? The way we give praise to God as a community of believers. The Board of Youth Affairs of the Presbyterian Church, Boya, is offering training on worship to youth and the young at heart on Saturday 11th June from 9 a.m. to 12 noon at Morton House at the Armalaya Presbyterian Church in Tunapuna. In everyday life, we all face difficult situations. 
But the important thing is how we respond in those situations. The Board of Youth Affairs has also decided to offer an introduction to conflict management and mediation on Saturday, 18th June, also at Morton House in Tunapuna, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. These training sessions carry a small registration fee of $25. Since we're on the topic of training, as a student minister, I would like to take the opportunity to tell you a little about my school, the St. Andrews Theological College, SATC. SATC is a small ecumenical college located on Paradise Hill, San Fernando. It is where all of our ministers, deaconesses, lay pastors, presiding elders, and anyone who is interested in learning theology or growing in their faith to attend to receive our GATE-approved qualifications. To give you an idea of our courses, over the period of June to August, SATC is offering an introduction to New Testament Greek, Reformation history, and human communication. I invite you to give the college a call at 657-7554 or check out their website at www.satc.edu.tt. So please keep these dates in mind, Saturday 11th June, Worship, Saturday 18th June, Conflict Management and Mediation, or check out the St. Andrews Theological College for more details. Thank you. Thank you, Sanya, for that information. If you are searching, hurting, or you need God's word in your life, I invite you to any one of our many churches found across Trinidad and Tobago. You can find out more about our churches on our website, www.pctt.org.tt. It has been a pleasure and a blessing spending this time with you. Thank you for dwelling on God's word at the start of this new day. I pray that you have a productive, blessed, and joyful week. And I leave you with today's moments of inspiration taken from 1 Corinthians. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Thank you.